we didn't live beside the house. We lived up on the road further up in a nice little place with a little plantation and a house of its own. And uh, beside a river, beside a river, where there was lovely purple flowers growing also, I could name it well. I used to, every year when it would come springtime, the river, just beside the river, there was a profusion of these little flowers. Now, I can't remember their name, but I did call it. Anemones, anemones, that's what it was. Purple anemones, all purple. Then we would, go, just, just over the road, we could go down by the river again to the seashore. And there we would meet our friends after school. We would play, there was a green there where you could play football. And I, although I, being a girl, enjoyed playing with the boys, played football with them, we played rounders, perhaps sometimes we tried to play tennis, skipping, what have you. And then another good thing was the fishermen in the winter t in October they would go out with their nets to bring in the herring. We loved that because we loved to pull in the nets. And of course they shared with us. So that they, we got the fresh herring and we could go home. And of course my mother being a good cook, the next morning we'd get lovely fresh herring for breakfast. And the fishermen would take us out in their boats. And that was it. We enjoyed having rope, as we called it. We enjoyed that very much. In the summer, and the summers then seemed to be quite good, we often brought a lot of rocks, and there was always a little place we didn't need to go out to the open shore, because as big as, it, say, as big as my bedroom here, there was a beautiful water which you could, if you weren't a swimmer, you could sit in that water and watch all the big fish swimming around, little tiny fish. And there we would sit and often uh, we would bring uh, a picnic and we would sit after we had our whatever we did, bathing as we could bathing. We would sit on the rocks and enjoy our cake and whatever we brought, not tea, cake and lemonade, that was it. Where my father was the the head garden. There was two gardens, but he was the head garden. Port Nagoli, we called the house. A very old county Ancon farm with the dogs. Because there's dogs, castle dogs, quite a few dogs, well known, really aristocrats. Now, um, again, our house wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, there was no estate there, just a large just a quite a, a decent sized mansion and ground round it, looking down at the sea. And my father delighted in, I think he had a lot to do in making the garden look beautiful because I think when we went there it wasn't so nice. And he planted a lot of daffodils and tulips. First time I ever saw real purple tulips. Purple. But ever and there at the show, at the Cushion Dog Show, he got prizes for tomatoes, hydrangeas, roses. He got prizes, and Sir, the, Lord Craigavon, who was Prime Minister of Northern Ireland for quite a while, he came to the show and he remembered my father because at one time at Craigavon, my father, as a young man, I suppose that's where he first was employed as a gardener. Well, the day came when my father said we'd have to leave because Captain Dobbs, also Miss Dobbs, his sister lived with them. Now they shared expenses. Miss Dobbs went off down to Dublin. We are told that she was a mistress, perhaps. To Roger Casement, so the story goes. Anyhow, she knew him very well and she was very interested in the south of Ireland and there she went to learn the language. You see, 
When she was then, however, Captain Dobbs and she fell out, and he went to live in quite a small semi out attached below at Cushendorf, but he couldn't afford to take my father. And therefore, Miss Dobbs employed my father and also his helper, John. Oh, I forgot his surname, Johnson. However, then off she go to, to Dublin, and then, of course, we had to go into the big house and look after it. Now, that was, that was really splendid because we would go and live for maybe six months in the big house when she was away in Dublin or wherever she would go at the time. And we enjoyed that very much. Also, she had books there in the library and she didn't close up the, our library. I, could, I can't remember the books, but I knew I could read some of those books if I wanted to. However, the day came when she, and she'd always bring us nice presents, lovely, we were still children, and toys she'd bring home. But she decided she couldn't afford two gardens. And as uh, John McCollum, that was his name, McCollum, belongs, was a cushioned all a bachelor. And my father also realized I was getting big and there was no work for her. There wouldn't be anything for any employment for his family as we would grow up. So also to give John the column uh, effect would be unfair for to, her to ask him to go. So my father decided it was better for us to go back to Belfast and we left John the column there and left and uh, left Port Nicole and came to Belfast. So that's how that happened. And there were fishermen very friendly and it was a happy place to live. And when the show the, uh, was on, the priest and my father would be on the committee and there was the big hotel where they would have their committee meetings. Yes, that's where they have their meetings. And the, clerk and the minister of the Church of Ireland, the Reverend Shaw, they all would meet there prior to the, uh, to the show to arrange everything. School, also a little school where there was only about 40 of us. And that was infants with one teacher, Miss Archer. She came from Dublin. She was, I realize now, much because I was there until I was about 15, from when I was about 11, 15. She taught me much. And I read good books, Dickens books, Shakespeare. And I think that because I loved reading and I had a vivid imagination, that helped me immensely. The, the good books and of course history. Well, I loved history. And then geography, to point out all the places in, in Ireland. I love to be able to be clever enough to be able to do it well. Geography, history. They were, and English, and English, I enjoyed. I loved writing stories and painting. I liked painting flowers and painting designs. Those are the things I love. But stories, yes, history. Yes. Yes. And it, then there was an old man came every summer and he had no legs. And he sat on a little, a little, piece of wood and he had little wheels on this and he sat on this and people who were sorry for him gave him money. Every summer he came. I've always kept away from him because we're sort of frightened of him. I can't remember his name but he often spoke to my father and the Piros came and we enjoyed that very much. The now the one thing about the Piros I, if I hadn't, it was only a penny, I would give it to them. But for some, if I hadn't a penny, I didn't like to watch them because I felt that wasn't fair. I hadn't paid my way. That, that to me, I wasn't being honest. And 
I always tried to avoid that and see that I had a penny to give to the heroes. 